100. Well, it's been a bit of a road, but I've enjoyed every second of it. I guess it's time for me to sort of look back and see where I've come, what I've learned. Um, and generally, uh, my view of the antinatalist phenomenon is that, um, for what it's worth, and I doubt many antinatalists are terribly worried about my opinion, uh, it is, um, at best, an opinion. It's a value judgment placed upon existence itself. And as value judgments are just value judgments, it's arguable. I don't think it's possible to debunk it. Um, I don't think it's possible to even win anyone over from an antinatalist position. That's, again, just like coming to antinatalism, uh, being, uh, leaving antinatalism is something that only uh, the individual can do for his or herself. It's telling that uh, David Benatar's book, uh, Better Never to Have Been, The Harm of Coming into Existence, starts off with an adjective, which is uh, better, uh, which is the ultimate value judgment. Better, worse. Um, it's, uh, it's just uh, an adjective that places value on certain things, as it were, arbitrarily, and um, places value judgments on existence itself. It presents itself, David Benatar's book um, presents the argument as logical and reasonable and rational and philosophical, but it's loaded down with value judgments um, and appeals to emotion and all uh, all that sort of baggage that comes with rhetorical language. Um, I don't think it's possible not to have uh, rhetorical language or emotional language in such a debate as life worth living because that's an inherently value-based or value-laden question. You can't ask someone for, a, for an opinion and then sort of hold it against them that they express one. And I, I'm not judging anyone for that. But as I say, it is nothing more than a value judgment. It is an opinion. My beliefs are just as much an opinion as anyone else's. Um, my view of the whole thing is just a value judgment. My view of antinatalism is a value judgment. I freely admit that. Um, does value does uh, rather antinatalism come off looking like a religion? It certainly does, from my perspective. <clears throat> um, with my limited contact with antinatalists and antinatalist literature and thinking, um, and the main one is um, the prickly sort of defensiveness that one gets when dealing with um, at least the YouTube antinatalist subculture. I, it's difficult to find antinatalists anywhere else uh, apart from YouTube. Um, not that I really look very hard, but um, the fact that, um, generally speaking, uh, people making cases for YouTube, or for YouTube antinatalism, are generally extremely dismissive and uh, denigrating towards anyone else's beliefs in anything, and denigrating and derogatory towards everything. Um, I think that it's a bit bizarre that people should get defensive whenever antinatalism is attacked, but it does seem to be that, uh, that that's the case. And that, again, that inevitably points to some sort of fanaticism or um, emotional investment in the whole thing, which is fine, again, um, but it, again, it does end up, whether it likes it, likes it or not, looking like a religion. Uh... And by the same token, anyone would say that uh, perhaps about the points of view that I've put across. I make no effort to even hide the religious imagery that I use in my own um, my own uh, way of describing what I uh, I won't really say beliefs, but my sort of tools and metaphors for trying to figure out reality. Uh, so I'm not saying that I'm any different from antinatalists, but again, at the end of the day, it's an opinion. It's a value judgment better never to have been, says that and admits it from the very first word. Thank you.